The spa show. Um, I made that up on the spot. I hope I hope it was okay. Uh, we'll see. I didn't have any backup music, so that's I invented that now. I am hoping that I get some backup music soon because I have met so many people on this platform called Clubhouse that actually make audio and music and incredible stuff. And I want to have them on. And perhaps as a trade, they would do a lovely new jingle for me. Ladies and gentlemen, you are on the spa show. My name is Chris B. As you can see, I just moved my logo so you could see my name. It's actually Chris Bass. And uh, we are here today to talk to you about performance and theater and the community thereof. Why did I say that? Why did I say that? I don't know. She's not gonna answer me. She's not even here. Um, yeah, yeah, we're, we're here to talk about all that. And uh, I have some, some lovely guests here today. Uh, I actually have two guests. I did say we were going to have one guest, but a last minute addition came in in the wire, at the wire, at the wire, Mr. I don't need to say his name because you all know him. Ryan McCurdy is backstage, as well as the lovely Jessica Ryan is joining me today. And I just I just want to get him on stage now. I'm going to stop talking because my wife tells me I talk too much anyway. And I ramble on and on and on and on. And I never stop. So I'm going to try and get them in here as soon as I can. I think we're having some difficulties with the charcuterie board. One of them got wedged under the door. And I can't open the door to the green room right now. But I'm Oh, we're good. Okay, I'm going to bring him on now. The green room is now open, so I'm first. I'm going to bring on Jessica Ryan. We're going to talk a little bit, and then Ryan McCurdy is going to join us in just a bit. But Jessica, how are hey. you doing? Hey, da 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 da. da, 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 da. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I got you. <laughs> yeah. It is. Uh, it is an homage to the Johnny Carson of of years past. I um, love it. I love yeah. it. So, uh, and now I'm going to move that Ooh. there. Yeah, Ooh. it just it, it moves all over the place. It's crazy. Uh, Jessica, we met on this platform that we we share together, uh, known as Clubhouse. It mm -hmm. has become this giant in our community, at least from our viewpoint, <laughs> yeah, of right. of being able to communicate and and uh, network and meet new people that we have never met before. And so now I've met you. I told you all about me. <laughs> I would love to know more about you. Oh, who me? Give me your elevator pitch <laughs> about yourself. So intense. Uh, um, <laughs> recovering polite Midwesterner. Um, not as polite as I was when I lived in the Midwest, but you know, lovely nonetheless. Um, I'm like a. I sometimes refer to myself as like a mad scientist at the intersection of technology and theater. That's oh, like wow. the two things I love. And I like making, finding out what's in the middle of those two areas. Um, but really I started as a theater actor. I got my equity card covering Donna McKechnie and playing a lead at good speed. And I um, uh, was able to start a theater with Everett Quinton from the Ridiculous Theater Company and just had all these incredible experiences um, as an actor, started becoming a director, and then moved to LA part-time, got into voiceover, which I know you and I both share a love for, um, and making digital content, and then ended up back over here on this side, um, uh, you know, making crazy stuff at the intersection of theater and technology, and I Oop, wrong side. Mirroring. I have a couple of companies all together now back there and Broadway unlocked. Yes. And I believe I believe I can pull something up real quick. Uh, let's see. Oh, here. God. What is it going? Oh, no. This is a real uh, dice no, no, roll no, no, when no. it comes to yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, the dice roll is that, yes, we we know of your website. Ooh, there it is. I have I have gone to it and checked it out and I have joined the beta. Yes. Um, and actually, you're now in the steam zone. So let me take that away. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this. And is this is this somehow based on streaming live from different theaters? Am I getting that wrong? No, you're definitely right. I, I, I think at the center of like what we're doing with this company. So if you don't know, um, Broadway Unlocked, this company that I, I, I created almost a decade ago, was actually the first company to create um, hybrid concerts, like Broadway concerts that 
combined or blended in-person audiences with digital audiences. Um, and we've been doing that for almost a decade. We raise money for survivors of violence, which is like a cause that's very near and dear to my heart with these concerts. And so when the pandemic hit, you know, we had been doing this a lot, this thing that, you know, our entire arts industry was like, oh, crap, how do we do this? We've got to go to screens. We had been doing that. And the one, uh, one of the big learnings and challenges that we took out of making that sort of concert, uh, which went straight to YouTube, um, was that for long form stuff like theater is, people are really only like staying about 10 minutes. Um, and, you know, we knew at the beginning of the pandemic, if orchestras and ballets and theaters were going to have to put their stuff online, you have to recreate the magic of like, or translate actually is what I would say, the magic that we feel when we're in the audience watching theater in Savannah or in New York, it doesn't matter, right? Like it's, it's, it's this extraordinary thing where our heartbeats match up, they sync up, there's science, you know what I mean? In addition mm -hmm. to all the fun magic. And so all together now is born out of that. And we're creating uh, digital venues that are experiential um, and that allow digital audiences to have as magical of an experience around the broadcast as the people who are in person at our theaters. Wow. Um, so I, I, I know we're on a platform that has a similar idea. Um, StreamYard is where I do all of my broadcasts, but they are owned by another company called Hopin. Hopin. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and they're trying to do something very similar. How, how does yours stand out against what they're trying to do. So fun fact, we started on Hopin and are the number three highest volume uh, creator of shows on Hopin. So I actually know the platform really well. And we use StreamYard all the time. Um, I was invited to speak on Hopin really early on in the pandemic and was like, ooh, I think I could do something with this. And so we sort of hacked it and turned it into this incredible prototype, like the V1 of our product. Um, the thing about Hopin and a lot of these other platforms is it's too expensive. It's not mm. built or prioritized for like live performance experiences. And so to work with us through this past year, it was like not cheap because it takes us a team of 15 people and at least six weeks of production and a ton of time and care to manage the actual technology so that you know, people's patrons uh, don't have a panic attack when they get on the technology. So that that's really at the end of the day, that's what we're doing differently. Hopin's being built for conferences, right? For people who don't, patrons keep coming to the same, you know what I mean? The same purveyor of shows, whereas right. people go to a conference once a year, what it's just like two different separate things. So yeah, but funny enough, yeah, we're very grateful for Hopin. And we've had an incredible couple of years where one of their case studies, if you go look on their website, and very proud to be there along with the UN, our little Broadway unlocked space. But yeah, we, we're very passionate about making this more affordable and accessible for individual creators, arts organizations of any size, um, to be able to, um, yeah, make digital environments that are really fun to come to. Yeah, I, I think that's very important that we, it is it is something that we need to make accessible to everyone. And it is also very important that we recognize that it is not inexpensive to do by no. any means. No. And oh my God. the third thing I want to say <laughs> is that none of us are making killer money doing no. this either. <laughs> so no. Yeah. So um I, I we had we I had briefly listened in, into your conversation earlier today on Clubhouse where we mm -hmm. talked about how the UK and Great Britain really support that that effort, yeah. whereas here in the United States we don't really have that method of support. I mean, you look at uh, like NPR and PBS. Yes, there is that, but for theater, there's really not that that uh, that tie-in. No. Um, so we have to create our own, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which you're like, fingers crossed. I'm like the theater or arts company that like can get the, you know, big, there's, there's no, there's no limit. There's so many arts organizations making incredible work, right? That's not the right. litmus of whether we get money or we're fu heavily funded by the NEA or a city organization, wherever we are. Like it just unfortunately is not a meritocracy in the right. uh, United States. <laughs> yeah. So sad. But mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. we we find ways around it because we're nimble. We do. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I'm going to speak about a nimble person real quick, and I'm going to bring him on stage. Uh, Brian <laughs> McCurdy is one of the most nimble and and creative people that I know. We share basically the same brain, although I think he has mine on Tuesdays, Thursdays, <laughs> and Fridays, 
<laughs> and then I get it back on Sunday and Monday. And then somebody just, I flink, we flip for it every other day. But he's <laughs> he's backstage right now. I want to bring him out. Also, before I bring him out, I want to say, hi, Jan Hildebrandt. So nice to have you here. And uh, yes, yeah, stay with us. Uh, this, this conversation is going to get very interesting. So <laughs> Ryan, how's it going, sir? It is well. It is well. Hello. Hello, Jess. Hello, Chris. Hey. Uh, I notice your blue mic there. That's that's very mm -hmm. prominent in the picture. I, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it's a new thing. It's actually sitting. It's sitting on the keyboard, so it might accidentally hit some of the buttons at some point. We shall see. You're very nimble that way. You just created a space <laughs> for your your microphone and stuck it there. Uh, so Ryan, this is Jess. Jess, this is Ryan. Hi, Ryan. What yes, sort of hello. questions? Or, or comments do you have for Jess just based on the brief conversation that we've had so far? Well, I did due diligence before today's <laughs> show, researching your uh, your guest, and I'm 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 blown away both by the 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 amount of content that you've been generating, but also the speed at which or, or the uh, the fact that you got to jump on so many on so many people by by thinking about mm -hmm. this before it became a necessity and i think that's the it's so funny that you used the word nimble when you were introducing me because i was backstage thinking how do i talk about nimbleness being difficult in a situation like the pandemic that we're in and you know just having creating this work and creating these opportunities and and re-examining the digital space before we had to that is the definition of of mm -hmm. of nimbleness um so anyway, I'm just blown away by the work that you've done. And uh, and so, yeah, I, I do have a question about... Matter of fact, wait just one moment. Oh. I, I have something here. <laughs> this is also nimble. So, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually <laughs> thinking about re-gifting this right now, just, just for the very fact that um, you've done all that you've done. Um, I was given this for my efforts. <laughs> And I think you are well deserving of the Golden Light Bulb Award for what you've done so far for the theater. Um, I love it. So we can we can thank Savannah Stage Company for that. That was that was given to me just out of the blue. I didn't even expect it, but I, I'm giving it to you as well. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you. I love that. Yeah. You're gonna like show it next time I'm on camera. Oh, yeah, right. this way. Next, though, I'll have one over here that we paper mache for ourselves as well. I actually like really love that, so I'm totally gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it, do it, do it. Glitter is always happy. That's always. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Ryan, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, that's okay. So my question for Jess was, do you think, since you've, you've been at the forefront of this for so long, do you think there is a point in the digital adaptation where where theater, where theater ceases to be theater and becomes film specifically? Or do you think that if it's done with the correct intentions that there's always going to be a theatrical energy behind it? Who are you following? I'm answering your question with a question, but do you follow Great. Jared Mazzocchi on Twitter at all? I do, yes. Yeah, because mm -hmm. so like my perspective on this, because I was so early onto it was like, and because I'm in both theater union, you know, that, I'm in equity and SAG. And like, I just, I immediately was like, all right, uh, what I see back in 2013 is that opportunity to involve and include more people earlier on and from other places in this like theatrical world that everyone wants to be a part of that we are so lucky to be a part of, whether it's in Savannah or New York or whatever it is. Um, but but because I knew it was going to be really hard to deal with like unions and like estates, licensing estates and stuff like that. I was like, you know what? No way. I don't have time for that. I just want to like open these doors. I'm going to make what are essentially live theatrical events, right? That that introduce you and like give you access to the theater world and hopefully point you towards being more likely to attend your in-person theater wherever you are or arts organization. But I, I just totally stayed away from theater. And so until this year, my opinion was no, like theater's theater, digital, live digital is live digital. And, you know, there's a little bit of a Venn diagram there, um, mm -hmm. but that's that. And I feel like watching Jared's sort of drill down and sort of constant reminder and inquiry around language and how it changes and what it means to make theater has like kind of changed my my mind you know and I, i'm seeing like david may's questions on here about getting funding and and pivoting to digital arts but 
I think, oh, thanks. Yeah. I, th- I think maybe my real answer is that at the end of the day, we know there was a great NEA um, report that says adults who are engaged with technology around the arts are twice as likely to attend in person. I think that uh, digital arts, like live theatrical experiences exist. I do actually think that you can create some kind of theatrical event now. There's so much technology that addresses all of the little pieces and parts that make theater theater for us, which is not just what's on stage, right? But like, I think a lot of other things. And I'm wondering if maybe more precise language will emerge because at the, I guess my real point is it just makes live in-person theater more valuable. There are less seats, right? There's like, it's a more valuable thing. The more we can make some version of theater online is my belief. That's amazing. Uh, Yeah. Are you, I I was going to wait for you to speak. Go ahead, Ryan. (laughs) Well, I, and then I, I have another question, which is sort of, sort of dovetails off of that, which is, I think there's, I'm taken by in your in the bio that uh, that, that Chris ran with for the show today. I was taken by the the tone of your career being based around uh, intentionally creating uh, relationships and networking opportunities that then lead to the creation of further arts rather than mm-hmm. the focus. I mean, I, I think uh, most of the arts organizations I've been involved with have gotten into this the tunnel vision of you know creating productions of someone else's show and it's it, you know it's that it, the, the cycle of I have to just do a show I have to just do a show so do you think um have you been able to track and and do you believe that having that creating things like and I, I guess I would call them genesis events the idea that you're creating a Ooh. relationship I don't know yeah um do you think have, have you been able since you've been doing this for for you know nearly a decade um are you able to trace the way that that has created theater in, on a slower on a slower loop, but with potentially better ramifications than the sort of constant you know generation of plays that we get into. Oh my gosh, that's a great question. I'm like tracking, trying to quickly track back because you know the Give Back concert, which is the name of that concert that we mm-hmm. created, has been again as a product of trying to avoid. I can't convince a licensing or a state, you know, to like figure out how to use content ID on YouTube. So like, it's all been new work. And so I do think that it like this piece of it has led to um, a totally different, at least thoughts of of a totally different um, development model, you know, for new work. I think I actually think that's where a huge amount of the opportunity lives right now. That's like not our focus. But I think I think that whole development cycle is like primed to be shake, shook up. And I think that you can do it through technology because I think in the end of the day, and we saw it a little bit in the Give Back concert, what it essentially does is democratizes um, access to space because mm-hmm. it's cheap. And that means the development process could be put back in the hands of artists for longer periods of time before until, you know, it gets the money and it also opens up the door to like folks in, you know what I mean? If you're an extraordinary playwright in Savannah and think if we're developing new work across the internet to begin with for like whatever it is, however many years it is like, I I do. I think it's, it has just changed it a little bit because we're just at the tip of the iceberg, even though we've been doing this for so long. And I think the opportunity to change it is massive in the future. I, I really, I really hope that some of our constituents uh, here in Savannah are listening to this, or at least they'll listen to this on repeat. Because I think what you're saying now is, it. We've both known it as the game changer going forward, uh, because we can't live like this for this long without things changing drastically. Mm-hmm. And I, I do believe that there is an avenue toward getting more people in in the theater through this this effort. Um, so with that in mind, uh, Ryan and I are part of a, a local theater here mm-hmm. who is trying to build themselves up again. They actually pivoted in the middle of COVID like crazy people and decided to open a new venue. So, <gasps> I love that. <laughs> yeah. So we are in the middle of that effort uh, right now. Um, we just got our, our, uh, renderings back from the architect and I would love to share them with you just so you could see them as well as the people that are watching right now. Uh, this is, we were talking about the Savannah repertory theater. It is the only professional 
equity theater here in Savannah, although we do have one other equity theater, it, but it's a much smaller scale than, mm. than the Savannah Repertory Theater. So um, let's see if I can share these just so you can see. Um, so what it is, is there is a location downtown that used to be a Acura dealership. <laughs> that Love it. Was gifted to the Savannah Repertory Theater for use uh, wow. you know, we still have to pay a lease and everything like that. But uh, <laughs> they have they have said that we as a company can use this now to create theater. So uh, I'm going to share with you some artist renderings just so you can be enthused and uh, inspired. Let's see. <laughs> How do I do this again? Share a screen window. There we are. So this is the lobby area. Um, ah, that's awesome. Yeah. So before this, you would see cars on display and, mm -hmm. and salespeople walking around saying, hey, mm -hmm. what do you, can I, how, how can I get you into this today? Uh, but no, this would be how do I get you into these doors today so you can come see this amazing show. And then our second one here, if I can do this quickly enough. No, I don't want to share a video file. <laughs> Streamyard, stop. I mean, that could be any number of things. Yeah, yeah, that could be. Uh, not, mm -hmm. not that, not Cri that. Chris in uh, any number of com in costumes, yeah. Right, right. Oh my God, please. Uh, yes. And so now this is going to be the black box theater. Um, oh, wow. And you can see the audio uh, as well as the lighting um, controls up there. Yeah. And surrounding. And this, this uh, format, it can be changed into <clears> any number of complex uh, stages as well as seating arrangements. Um, that's really the idea behind it. But yeah, and, yeah. So in the vein in the vein of supporting local awesome, I want to point out those are by a company called Blue Lime, which operates out of the low country. So that was uh, they do they do really beautiful uh, graphic uh, renderings, and we're, we're we're very excited to be partnered with them on the project. So. I was actually legitimately going to comment on particularly on that second rendering about like how enticing that rendering is. I mean, I it's, know, right? It's sexy. That was sexy. <laughs> and and I I mean I don't I obviously I don't know how they do what they do, but but being being part of the email thread of it and looking at the technical terms they're using, I, I believe that each of those each of those audience members is pulled from a different image and like they're they're handcrafted into the seats, which I think oh that God. that act, that activates that activates the room in a way that if they had just lined it with like two Getty images, I think we would have we would have lost something. Totally. I have to share it again, uh, just so we can. Like, it's a really it's a really great rendering. Yeah, that's wild. Um, actually, and I, 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 don't, I can't point at it, but if you look to the right, the in the front row, on all the way to the right, one person before the end, it looks. If you zoom in, it looks exactly like Justin Kent, our uh, local Sick. local actor and Sick. impresario, and, Justin and P. I do Kent. That. I don't know if I can do that. Yeah, so the guy it's in not. The suit? Oh, there he goes. Yeah, yeah. He's he. Which which you know, I thank I thank him for wearing a tie and a suit to our theater. But uh, no, he's on the uh, he's on the other side, Chris. He's oh, on the other he's, side. Sorry. Uh, there. Over here. There he is. Yes. Oh, right there yeah, on the yeah, front. Yeah. There's see. there's Justin P. Kent. <laughs> That guy right there. Oh, oh that's so oh, cool. I don't know There's what some I lights. did there. Yeah, like, well, right. actually, Chris, I did not know that you were going to talk. Well, hello. I, I did not know you were going to talk about the venue, but I actually have a question for Jess about that, if, if I may. Yeah, I'm going to start um, sharing real quick. Go ahead. And this is, this is because I think we're, we have a very unique opportunity that uh, it's, it is quite possibly the worst possible time ever to be trying to create a new venue which i said to the i said to the board president just a couple of hours ago totally um, but also you know we only get one shot to open the doors correctly what would uh, do you have any thoughts or um or i guess advice off the top off off the bat for uh how we can be integrating uh either digital marketing or digital presentation mm. into these these brand new spaces. Like for venues that, because I think a lot of what we run into, especially with our aging regional theaters and a lot of our aging mm -hmm. off-Broadway houses, is there's no place to install new infrastructure. So what yeah. are things you might recommend for us to make sure are included so that we're future-proofing a new space? Oof, I love that question. And I, just as a like precursor, I have like a... My friend calls it bird walking, right? My my brain bird walks, which means it goes out in, in some weird places in order to come back into the actual question. So I'm about to bird walk for a second. I don't know what you're talking what? about. <laughs> Thank you. I feel I feel seen. Um, 
my first thought when you said it was a car dealership and I saw those renderings, I was thinking, I was actually thinking about Kansas City where I'm from and uh, mm -hmm. some friends of mine that created an incredible theater that lasted about a decade, it, you know, the old story, revitalized an entire neighborhood and then got pressed out um, called The Living Room. And it was in an old Dodge dealership. And the actual reason I bring it up is not because of the car connection. It's that what I saw over the years when I would come home to Kansas City and like go see shows and hang out there is what, what I think is the future of theatrical spaces, which is that it's much more community driven and less mm -hmm. tied to that. A theater, to your question earlier, a theater is a thing with a proscenium where people watch this play. You know what I mean? And I, because I would see at the living room, people come to see a show and sometimes it was proscenium and sometimes it was three quarter like you guys have in your rendering. And sometimes it was like a, a progressive play through the whole space, whatever it was. But people came and then they like hung out afterwards. And it was everyone from really young folks that were down there to the halls, you know, of Hallmark, like also staying and hanging around and having a beer and talking to everybody. And as I watched that theater progress, I thought this this sort of like story driven community space, I think, is probably the future, particularly of regional theater spaces. Um, but hard to do if you already have infrastructure, easier to do if you don't. And so then my next thought when I saw your renderings was of another uh, uh, another space that opened up during the pandemic, similarly to yours in KC called the Black Box. Like huge shout out to Heidi and the Black Box crew. And I think what they've done really well is they've integrated, not only integrated some technology to in order to like make it easier to video things or live stream mm -hmm. something, but they're also looking at it as a community driven story driven space not just we put on a play so mm -hmm. they are doing everything from plays and you know musicals inside to like live movie nights where the actors are doing like you know commentary over it to oh, I love I that. yeah <laughs> I love oh that. totally oh my god yeah like a mystery whole bunch of science theater 3000 very mystery yeah. science theater <laughs> 3000 and i think that I think what's neat about that blending of the two worlds of theater and technology, do you know what I mean? It's like new mm -hmm. spaces can open up like that. And I think as long as it's a, a story driven and community driven, like to me, those are the two things that matter. Um, but I would say like on the tech side of things, if it's at all useful, you know, I, I have been making this stuff with no money or resources forever. I am a huge like iPhone believer. And mm -hmm. now the technology has, progress so much that like Chris was saying he just watched our we had a show at the Waldorf Astoria on Monday night that we live streamed last Monday night that we live streamed with Freestyle Love Supreme and we live streamed it with three iPhones that cost $3,000 right which I know is not a small mm -hmm. amount of money but it's not broadcast camera money and literally it was just like iPhone Manfrotto tripod mm -hmm. uh, adapter that is a lightning to ethernet adapter so you can plug your phones in so if Wi-Fi mm -hmm. goes out you're not going to lose your stream and it also has that adapter has a power um, input so you can keep it powered. The sound is a little more complicated, obviously, but like most theaters have sound infrastructure in a way the Waldorf did not where we were at. Didn't I think it's like I think actually just getting really smart about mobile filmmaking tools and the way they can help with live streaming and high quality live streaming would be the technical side of what I might have my eye on if I was building space right now because it's small footprint. It's not super expensive and I mean, honestly, it's like super, super high quality. Yeah, just remember to put your phone on do not disturb. That's also that. Like, <laughs> or like us buy unlocked iPhones that you right. don't have a cell there plan on so you can't be interrupted. <laughs> perfect, perfect. And, um, and I want to... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's, your, it's your show, Chris. I apologize. I just, yeah. I'm so excited. I'm so show, excited, man. Uh, no. Uh, I, I, I... You... <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. No, uh, no, he'll be back in a second. Um, uh, so you you had spoke about this on Clubhouse as well, how you actually had to do two different audio feeds, one mm -hmm. for the the mobile version or the streaming version and one for the live audience that you had there as well. We did. Yeah. yeah I wonder if I was just thinking, I wonder if all mobile. So we work with all mobile on the in-person stuff. They're the crew that did like the Grammys and the Emmys this year, like all the, that crazy live stream stuff. They're amazing, but they made us a sound routing chart. <laughs> it's like, I wonder if they'd let us publish that. <laughs> Cause wow. 
I, I was telling them, like, even doing the Give Back concert, which is down at WNYC's um, space down in Tribeca. So it's built out for live streaming. It's like five um, hardwired PX something cameras that I can't remember. And, you know, just like in-house live streaming hardware and soundboards and stuff like that. But even with them, we'd come in each year and I'd be like, here's the crazy shit I want to do with like remote guests and live people on the stage. And every year their poor tech director would be like, why? I don't remember how to do this. And it'd take like three hours for us to figure out how to do it. Um, But the, I tell you what, the all mobile guys that came in and they had that stuff hooked up so fast. I, I think it's complicated to learn, but it's not complicated to repeat. You know what I mean? Um, and and it'll be and I, I'm I'm gonna make me ask real nicely if like I would let love us to share. open that uh, <laughs> Eric Eric with uh, some interruptory theater and myself would love to open up that can and just uh, take it apart. Um, let's see. Uh, David May says I'd love to see MST mm. MST three K style plus more commentary. Oh yeah, like story wonks. Um, or like a director's cut when you watch a director's cut of a film and they're talking about like how they pieced it together. That's really interesting. Yeah, that would be interesting to have like you could you could switch, you know, you could watch the live and or just switch on the director talking about it the whole time. Well, isn't that interesting? I mean, on that note of sound routing to two places, I mean, this is the stuff that starts making your brain blow. But like Mm -hmm. you could truly just do a classic traditional in theater, in person performance and never even know that for the digital audience there's a director right like on screen with them over because it's just two feeds right you could it's totally two different things i mean there's so much you can do yes welcome to the spa brainstorming show yeah exactly (laughs) this is all ip folks you cannot have it (laughs) yeah oh i i think i think the library of congress says once a thing once a piece of art is aired it officially has a walking copyright so this, this ip this ip is already is already now protected. it's aired now. it's live sorry <laughs> yeah sorry. <laughs> um gosh i there's so many things i want to talk about but ryan uh what other what other sparks come to mind right now well i wanted to shout out um savannah underground which is a a local for-profit professional hybrid theater company and they they have really taken the concept of the quintessential ghost tour which is you know has long been you know a a bastion of the tourism industry in savannah and they turned it into a really jen bishop of savannah rip and i saw uh, about a month and a half ago they turned it into a really brilliant stylized evening of theater but it made me think what you were talking about jess is that their their theatrical marketing is not just it's not just a sizzle reel or you know a series of still images, but it also doesn't give away the entire experience. And mm-hmm. it's those, you know, it, they're they're creating. I think a lot of it has to do with length that they create promo videos that are longer than a sizzle, but still leave you almost two thirds of the show to experience for yourself. And I, I found myself, um, it's that perfect thing. It's like, you know, what uh, everyone said when Hamilton was was released to help us all through the pandemic last year. Yeah. Is it was like. You watch all of Hamilton, and then you still want to see Hamilton on on totally. stage. And and I feel like the Savannah Underground has done a really great job of that. Is that you you don't you don't feel at the end of it like you've been given everything, so you still want to go, but you have been given enough of a digital experience that you really you have to hand it to them that you know they they've. I think when we were there, their audience was so was made up of so many more different types of people than I think a, a regional theater would usually obtain for a 9 p.m. on a Saturday showtime. Totally. And it's because they all saw they all saw the same video and they all said they all had the same desire to go see the experience. So that's a thing that I've like never understood really about the theater industry. And I wonder this might be just very New York because I've I've been here 18 years, so like almost my whole adult life. But so I, you have to tell me if this happens in Savannah, but. I never understood the like what seemed to me like the big lie, the big myth that like if there's videoed theater or bootlegs or whatever, whatever video clips released, we will lose ticket sales. It was just like never, ever going to be true because nothing is like sitting in person. Do you know what I mean? And there are like I've, to me it feels like people audience potential audience members divide into like three columns they're going to be more likely to come in person if they get to see that bootleg like to your point about seeing the great promo like digital content uh, they were never going to come see it in person because they're not in the same area and so you've just 
you're cultivating a new kind of audience member and who knows where that can lead if you decide to monetize it down the road um or you can't afford it right now right but you're going to become an in-person theater person like att attendee or audience member later and so i'm just like as the person who makes that video or releases that bootleg basically keeping you warm across that period of time where you don't you can't be a patron but i help cultivate you to be one later you know what i mean yes uh well it's and it's 100%. the idea percent <laughs> and the big lie the big lie which i think is a big lie the the opinions i'm about to express are mine and not chris bass's <laughs> but i i i suspect it goes I, th I think some of that tracks all the way back to well he's gone now <laughs> oh, he, we can tell we can say whatever we want he, he, yeah he's he's got that like uh the the national theater's 12th night floating uh yes. floating yeah. olivia thing going in on. every room in every room in, <laughs> right wait you have the wait you have the an identical chair in every room or you take the chair with you <laughs> I'm, I'm standing sir my chair is back here I'm wait that was just that was just choreography that was pretty yeah impressive. that was absolutely the choreography <laughs> I, I think it goes back as far as the the era of the of the Lincoln Center great performances, and I think a lot of it is that mm. equity, in a lot of ways, equity and the other uh, theater based unions created the idea they did not want video because it undermined the performer's ability to be paid, and it was the idea that mm. you can have video if the actors are paid this much. Ultimately, though, I don't know any equity actor that doesn't want the video more than they want the whatever it is, 15 or $20 bump. Like, you know, they want the video <laughs> so true. desperately. And so I think that's the great, I think the lie came out of the idea that somehow the video was going to keep people from having jobs, where I think what you're saying is exactly right, is I love the phrase you just used of keeping the audience warm, because not everybody, not, you know, New York, for all of its, you know, positioning as the jewel of the American theater, like, they are de they're, they're destination tourism, just like everybody else. Totally. And, the, you know, Hamilton reaching someone in Peoria is keeping that audience member warm uh, in, a, in a way that, you know, a postcard is never going to do or, or, you know, a write up in the paper is never going to do so. No, and isn't that funny to that point? Like we always talk about like no one, you know, you don't make your money in New York anyway, right? You make your money on tour and in licensing and in all of the merch that comes out of that, like. Yeah, I will say in defense of or in empathy for producers and many of my friends, I know that movie rights also had a lot to do with that. Cause there's mm -hmm. some like backdoor where like once you put it on a screen, the options are, I don't know enough about it, um, but we've managed to figure it out. You know what I mean this year? And it's not like anything changed significantly about the law. So I just kind of wish that we had gotten to that earlier, but whatever. I'm very grateful we're getting there. <laughs> Yeah, which uh, it, this is a good segue um, because we've been. Of talking course, about it is. Hamilton. Jess and I know what's up. Yeah, we got you. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So something that we were talking about earlier, again on Clubhouse, <laughs> was the the fact that I had no idea this was happening. Uh, Apple TV. Presents, Absolutely. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, and the fact that that I, me not knowing that this was happening was astounding. Um, Shout out just, Tony Lapage, friend of Savannah Rep there. Hey. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. 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 Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So Apple TV is going to be. It, what is it? September. It says. I think uh, next month. Um, that's coming up, and you'll be able to see Come From Away, which uh, has a place in my heart, um, it, as yeah. it does with everybody, because that was such a, a pivotal moment in our in our lives, and it 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 brings it it brings it to light in a way that no one would ever have even thought of, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I can't wait for this to happen. And I think that to your point, this brings that audience that would never have been able to see it, such as myself. I mean, I would eventually have been able to see it, but it, it, it doesn't make me not want to see it live either. <laughs> no. um, and, and I was saying this on Clubhouse, so, uh, you know, apologies, Chris, for repeating myself to you, but for everybody else that's, that's with us today, I, I, when I think about this stuff and I, th I think about the give back concert and we frequently will say, and with our comms director, like we, I, I, we're not even making stuff to, I don't want to be on the theater pages. Like that's, we are making th stuff for d people who don't know they love theater yet. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's the power of putting things on screen. Um, I think it's awesome to be able to reach like theater folks who love theater as well. But I actually think the primary opportunity is for people who don't know they love theater and yet. And I was saying to Chris today, like 
I think about, you know, when Titus Burgess did the give back concert, it was, I don't, I think he announced um, Kimmy Schmidt on it at the concert. Right. And so that video then goes up and it lives on and on and on. And then all of a sudden this person that is in wherever in the world that watches Kimmy Schmidt looks up Titus Burgess, finds that video, finds out he's this extraordinary singer and he sang this beautiful song that Georgia Stitt, our friend from Meister Music wrote for him. And then they're it like, I didn't even it know I love theater. You know what I mean? And that's, that's what's so exciting because every single person that, catches one of those moments where Kirsty Maldonado from Pentatonix sings or Titus or Uzo Duva or anyone that they know from TV is a, a moment where we can catch another person who will love theater, who will support theater, who will patronize their local institutions, hopefully, if we keep inviting them in, you know? And, and Titus off my Burgess, soapbox now. That's okay. <laughs> I was going to say Titus Burgess also has a connection with Savannah as well. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. Uh, he has worked with the Savannah Children's Theater, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And and uh, yes, and Little Theater, I think both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I cool. think I think he's I think he's a native. I'm I, I might be speaking out of turn, but I'm pretty sure he's a native. A native the, Georgian, I think is native Georgian. Yes. 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 Mm. Uh, oh, I believe so Tom cool. Tom Coleman Tom Coleman, who is, I think, five decades into a career of making arts for Savannah. I think he was his first director. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And Tom Coleman grew up next door to my wife. How crazy is there that? There you have it. That's actually, I did not know that. That's yeah. really amazing. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. These are the. Jess, are, 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 Jess are you in New York? Yeah. Okay. I am too. Let me know if you ever want to go Do you have, have coffee? more. Sorry, Chris. Yeah, let's go have coffee. Okay, good. Bye, Chris. You guys go have coffee. <laughs> Come and have coffee with us. <laughs> if, you, if you if you if you if you couldn't tell by the distinctive type of ceiling that I have in my studio apartment, say. this is a New York apartment. That's yes. amazing. I was actually going to say your camera to Chris, like you were saying, his sort of your framing makes it look huge. I was like, how is that such a big apartment for a New York apartment? <laughs> <laughs> and I have an echoey room that does not work well for voiceover. So, so uh, same. I mean, this yeah, solid. yeah. The only reason I get away with it in here is we've got a ton of film oh. equipment up there that kind of dampens the sound a little bit <laughs> there you go perfect perfect wow um so much so much to said so much so much to said that's so not, much to said that's so famous dave matthews band song yeah, yeah. <laughs> so much to said little baby. oh my god i'm so glad that just happened <laughs> <laughs> wakes up in the Right. That, that's actually Dave. Yeah. Dave Matthews needs to write the spa show theme song. Oh, that's good. The spa show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does he have cameo? Can you like pay him to do literally pay him to do that through cameo? Jess, I have a question about cameo. Um, right now. I, how long? Just, how long is this? How long is this? How long is this show? By the way, Chris. <laughs> What, I mean, how, how much? How much charcuterie did you give Jess? I guess yeah. like, she's like. I think she's like. She's she's eaten half the, the the thing so far. It's a small it's a small uh, board I should say. But uh, no, I I this is a, this is a serious question. I'm obsessed with this sudden new marketing technique, which is purchasing a cele a celebrity's speech about your product, the ones that allow it on Cameo, because I know some have very, I will not promote, I will not hawk, yeah. I will not, and there are some that they are like, just have me do whatever you want for a minute and a half. And then you see those videos, very usually very, you know, moderately low quality, but with the Cameo at the bottom, the Cameo uh, logo, and then they get ported to the product. And the product advertisement is what you know is a, you know it's a paid promotion right off the bat. Do you, um, uh, did you see that coming? Slash, do you think we're do you think we're at the beginning of a new accessibility to celebrities, uh, or do you think that's kind of flash in the pan as far as the idea that a third party product can obtain a celebrity just by paying one hundred fifty dollars, which is which seems like a steal. It seems like a steal. <laughs> Chris Chris Bass, like, oh, you're on Cameo. No, no, I'm not on Cameo, but oh, okay. two of my guests were acquired through Cameo Conversations. Wait, what? What? Yes. 
See, yeah. I, I'm fascinated. Tell, who who were your guests? Well, one is actually in the show that I just promoted. That would be um, Dave Matthews Band. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the force uh, is strong. Oh gosh, and now I can't remember her name. From uh, come from away. Oh Jen? yeah, Colella. Yeah, yeah, Jen Colella. Yeah. So I had Jen Colella on the show, and I started a conversation with her through cameo we got we went offline and had this this wonderful conversation oh. um and and she agreed to be on the show because oh my god what a brilliant way to source awesome guests for a show god so that's I, so smart <laughs> so do we just do you think this is the beginning of a cottage industry or do you think it is like do you where, where do you think that's going the sudden the fact that video a video connection to a celebrity can suddenly become a much more expansive real world connection, which I think goes back to what you were, what you've been doing is the idea that, that these, these interactions and these video produced for video pieces become a real world creativity. I, I'm going to play devil's advocate and like undermine my own self on this. Cause well, a, I didn't know people were doing that until you just said that I literally oh. had no idea. So <laughs> what, but it, what it reminds me of and where I, I'm worried, like I'm finding myself drowning in worry is actually the voiceover industry and the commoditization once, like for all that it's ter like really terrible for great working actors to have to have, particularly in voiceover, an agent, right? To get big SAG jobs. Um, and that's really not very democratized and all of that, that good stuff. On the flip side, as we, I'm sure everyone here is a, painfully aware of, as soon as Voices.com and Voice123 and all of those sites started springing up and you started taking down that wall and you allowed direct, it's direct to consumer, right? It's like direct mm -hmm. access. VoiceOver was commoditized and, and, and that makes it like... <laughs> I'm thinking about for me, for for me, because I just do. I still do a lot of voiceover. But I do more voiceover now, straight through relationships on the internet, but for far less money. So it works great for me because I just like to do it to keep up my artistic practice. But I couldn't do it for my living, and so I, that's where my head goes with like cameo and celebrity. <sighs> I mean, celebrities being able to like endorse your pro product is, I think, the price. It, I think it gets commoditized, and then it's not actually livable for the celebrity right yeah yeah uh so i was gonna i was gonna interrupt real quick we can't get dave matthews but we can get dave mustaine of megadeth so um <laughs> so close uh, only 2.99 for dave mustaine um, oh, oh um if you I, do not have him as your <laughs> jingle for the show next week i'm gonna be pissed <laughs> that's actually a really great fit yeah <laughs> Yeah. Oh, really well, no, I, it's interesting only because well, yeah. yeah. Well, in a lot of cases, it's these smaller companies that are benefiting from it. It's it's interesting because it, it almost reverse. It's like you're saying it almost reverse engineers the accessibility. Suddenly, little little products are able to have a big voice speaking mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. And it's but you know it's that if it if it if it swings too far in that direction celebrities will cease to be celebrities because like you said they can't afford to or i think you're right i think you were implying too that um maybe that that a celebrity can become saturated as a spokesperson and then the value of their spokes voice decreases also that and, yeah and so it's interesting i feel like it is that is that is an interesting pendulum which we have to be very cautious with because if the little companies suddenly all have big voices then then we run out of the big voices, then it's, you know, it's back to uh, dog eat dog again. <laughs> yeah. And in addition, I mean, this is some nerdy stuff that I just always have my head in because of startup land. Like if I'm a small company and I get real ingen ingen ingenuity, what? What is that word? I don't know. I'm, I have a lot of ingenuity. Yes, yes. there we go. Um, <laughs> ingenious. <laughs> yeah, ingenious. Thank you. And I get someone to to do something for me on Cameo, and I use it, and it makes it makes my little company. I have a big voice, which I just love how you just put that. And I blow up, and my comp that means my company grows faster, and I'm acquired, for instance, right? Like someone's going to be doing diligence on the company, and if there's any chance, like if they they're gonna find that Cameo video, and if there's any chance that celebrity can sue for profits right because the little company became a big company i'm not going to get acquired or you know like there's so many weird crazy nightmare 
knock on interesting effects of all this. I'm I'm so curious to see what what ends up happening. Someone will monetize that specifically, though, don't you think? Like whatever starts as a byproduct of Cameo will eventually get monetized specifically for companies. I feel oh, like. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, I think, yeah, and I, I mean, I think it might end up being, I mean, now you're seeing, um, I was just reading yesterday about how I, that, you know, everyone assumed Mark Hamill had done a voice for, uh, for a show that Mark Hamill was recently on, it, no spoilers, but like Mark Hamill played a character that he has played in the past again, and everyone assumed mm-hmm. because there were new lines that it was Mark Hamill yeah, and they I ran it through, about. they ran it through a neural net, they ran it through a neural <clears throat> net and it's Mark Hamill's voice being recreated from all of his previous audiobooks the and deep his- fakes. It was a deep fake. And not only was the face a deep fake because the face was intended to be younger, but the voice was a deep fake. And mm-hmm. I, I wonder too, if that's, um, it, you know, I, I always, do you have any concerns, Jess or Chris, about the, the moment at which the deep fake becomes, I, I guess it's not what, uh, the, the, the singularity. Like, do, do we <laughs> worry about a point where, where actors are, where actors can exist on a screen and don't have a human inside of them anymore? Or do you think that's never actually going to happen? On a um, screen? I think it'll happen. Oh, but I mean, mm-hmm. but in, in a way that can yeah. replace the live experience. I do. I don't like it, but I do. And But I also, <laughs> like, I believe fundamentally, I think, question mark, that, like, we don't live in a vacuum. And if that were to come to fruition, at, right, and... That, that has all these sort of like environmental knock-on effects, we'll come up with another way for actors who are real and do things to be important. I don't know how you stop it, I guess, honestly, mm-hmm. is my, my thought about it. I don't know about you, Chris. Uh, well, I was gonna, I'm, I'm basically gonna echo what you said, but even further, I mean, we, we are actors, we are ourselves, we are always selling our persona and, and who we are. And I don't think that that can be 100% fake ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially like with the voice AI technology where it, it is they're they're basically absorbing all these phrases that you say and recreating you saying something else it's still not going to be you ever because mm-hmm. I, no one knows that I'm about to say charcuterie again but I just <laughs> did you know <laughs> so uh, actually that would probably be a common phrase that I use very often but um, it, it, essentially you know with it, the art, it is still an art form, and I think that humans have to be involved in that art form at, at some level. I was going to, not to like to go back and toot my own horn or our company's horn, but like I actually think exactly what you just said is why live digital is going to become so important because you cannot, you can't just, well, currently, 50 years from now, probably something out there, but you cannot replace a moment in which you don't actually know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. And that's never been so for film, right. Or anything that's pre-recorded, like that's all made earlier. So like, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's going to, I think it's going to re rebalance and put a heavier weight and a more importance and more value on like in-person theater and, and live digital and anything that is really truly live. That's awesome. Like the awkward silence when the host of the show doesn't immediately have something to say. (laughs) Pauses are important. <laughs> it gives, it gives the audience time to reflect, time to think. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. You know, so I, I wanted to give them that as well as yourself. And so, um, yeah, I, I was. Oh, I, I, have, I, haven't, I haven't thought or reflected in years, Chris. It's okay. okay. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Uh, I, I do want to. You, you had mentioned a couple of shout outs here. I, w- I wanted to give out some shout outs of my own about our Savannah Community <laughs> Theater and that and the fact that we continue to live and inspire and do things. Uh, the Front Porch Improv guys have been existing this entire time basically off of. Uh, the giving tree. They, they set up a Patreon site and people subscribe to them. Awesome. And somehow they were able to keep a new, a brand new facility open this whole time, wow. open at the beginning of the pandemic and, and, and kept going this whole time. So again, we are, we are nimble, we are spunky and we keep going. <laughs> it's like, um, it's like a reverse giving tree. It's as if the little, the, if it, as if the little boy was not a, a selfish little child and had lots of little friends and they you know watered the tree right 
Right. And then uh, Savannah Stage Company, which uh, never really technically has had a theater, but has consistently kept going this whole time as well. In fact, they just had a show this weekend where it was not a traditional show. It was a Carol King inspired review show. Mm. Uh, I went to see it and I thought it was it was it was really good. I mean, it wasn't uh, in person theatrical experience like we're used to, but I, I thought it was really good and they, awesome. they keep that spark alive. And and I think that's very important to note. Um, and I would love to see technology involved in that somehow in a new space on Broughton, which I showed some renderings about earlier. <laughs> um, so if you're watching, please give to the Savannah Repertory Theater, help us make this a, a, real, a real thing, as well as please support your local theater community mm -hmm. Uh, in any way you see, if, if it's financial, yes, please. If it's by helping to promote it, if it's by actually going out and, and auditioning for something, do that as well, please. All those things. Uh, Jess, you have something coming up later this month, yes. actually later next month, because it's still the oh, end yeah, of August, yeah. but mm -hmm. September, you have, you have another, uh, show that you're doing at the Waldorf. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, totally. We, yeah, we have uh, a show in September. It's live at the Waldorf. It's a series that is <laughs> live at the Waldorf. How weird. Um, the Waldorf Astoria <laughs> uh, in New York City, where Cole Porter's piano resides, which is really why we're doing this show. His original piano that he wrote anything goes on. Um, it is an in-person and live on the internet show. Um, and last month we, uh, as Chris mentioned, just finished doing one with the ladies of Freestyle Love Supreme, um, which will be back on Broadway this fall. And uh, we're doing a show with the Actors Fund in September, that's September 27th. And we're doing a show with Ryan uh, Meister Music uh, in October, October 25th. And those tickets are available on Today Ticks for the digital exclusive. It's inside our venue. So there's like all kinds of cool stuff that happens um, when you get a ticket to the venue before and after the show. Yeah, it's super fun. Ryan oh. and I were going on Today Ticks right now. <laughs> Uh, I, y'all think I'm kidding. No, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> I'm doing it. And, and actually I went to the website, so I, I saw the, uh, oh, the ticket link, uh, yeah. $15 a ticket. $15. I think it's two shows for, I don't actually remember. Okay. 25. It's, 25. it's really, it's beautiful branding Isn't too. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That <laughs> brown, just the brown. Uh, Can uh, I shout out someone yeah, on go that? Ahead, please. Yeah. yeah. Here's the thing y'all. You heard it here first. We're a startup. Like, <laughs> Our, our employee and colleague, Natalie Hyatt, graduated with a BFA from Missouri State University, my um, university, about in the middle of the pandemic, came to work for us. She is brilliant. She's a brilliant theater creator, but also just like technologist. And she sure did make that branding in Canva, just in case you're thinking you need a bazillion what? dollars to do anything. Yeah, we were like, we only have four weeks to pull this show together. Hey, Nat. Uh, can you, make, can you make a logo and some stuff on Canva? And she was like, how is my stuff on Today Ticks? <laughs> <laughs> well, so shout out to awesome. Natalie Renfro. <laughs> and Canva. Does, and Canva, yeah. yes. <laughs> it does go to show that I think the only thing, the, the only way you can't deliver a competitive branding or a competitive product is to say, I don't have the resources. Because obviously no one Agreed. in your team said that. And as a result, I'm looking at something that looks like a million bucks and did not cost that much. So thanks. Yeah. 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 We like to put the money towards the stuff on stage. You know what I mean? I, we're going to get along splendidly. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. I knew this was a good friendship. I knew it was. <laughs> you're, you're, it's like you're a good connector of people and uh, organizations or something, Chris. I, 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 I get that. I get that label sometimes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, Wow, this has just been, a, 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 and we're almost at an hour now. It's amazing. been amazing. I've, I've enjoyed it so much. I, I can't wait for you guys to have coffee and be just like. <laughs> Send you a picture. <laughs> no, no, no. Ryan's going to FaceTime me. He's okay, going to do it. Uh, so we'll, I'll, I'll meet you there as well, and I'll bring my own coffee. <laughs> and uh, make sure you get this made. Uh, yeah, it's solid. I'm right here. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I, I just have my. I have actually my have two mugs in case we're, we're oh my curious. Gosh. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> I left my mug. In oh, I like room. that yard mug. Shout out to the yard. That's where I'm at. That's where our offices are. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Oh, oh, great. Shout out. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> See you at the yard. Yeah. Us in Savannah, we have no idea what that is, but we <laughs> imagine it's a wonderful place. <laughs> um, 
anyway, got, gosh, again, it has been it has been a tremendous honor to have you on the show. Uh, I can't wait to talk to you more on on the clubhouse. Uh, you have a room every week uh, mm-hmm. on Clubhouse talking all about technology Tuesdays at 1215 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that is in the uh, gosh, what is the name of the club? Broadway Unlocked. Broadway Unlocked. Yes. And yep. uh, Broadway Unlocked is as well your business. As it is well as all together now. And uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to do that. Also, wait, one more thing. One more thing. I'm trying to think. What else? I had something else, but now uh, you like a bird brain. Uh-huh. There you go. Bird walking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bird, <laughs> Not bird, bird brain. Walking. Be nicer to uh, yourself. Bird walking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, David May says Canva. And he I like I a, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Graphic designers hate it, uh, yeah. but I he, can't afford a graphic designer. So, okay. Sorry, <laughs> <Yeah>. David. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's, that's okay. He'll, he'll survive. He uses Photoshop like I do. So shout out to Adobe. <laughs> Just spent an hour shouting things out. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> well, that that small, that out. small, that small business startup Adobe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So before we adjourn, I must tell you that we have a tradition here at the spa show as well Ooh. as the sp- 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 show, which is what it used to be. Now it's the spa show, it's easier to say. <laughs> At the easy. end of every show, we take a moment of television history and we recreate it. At the end of that show, whatever that show was. So this is like the aha moment or the, the jump the shark moment or, or just the, you know, something weird has happened and we have to react to it and then mm-hmm. we freeze. So I call it sitcom freeze. Today I'm gonna say TV freeze because uh, I'm actually going to u- use an episode of Dallas. <laughs> uh-huh. And this is when we found out that JR has been shot. This is the end of a season. And uh, yes, JR has just been shot. And we're back at the, the ranch. And we're, uh, I-, I don't think this actually happened, but we're going to react anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to say JR has been shot. And then three, two, one. TV freeze, and we're all going to react. It's a bit of improv. So here we go. Great. JR's been shot. Three, two, one. TV freeze. <laughs>